so it's a very blustery day outside our studio today so I've decided I'm going to get a bit tropical. So today's video is a step-by-step -step to show you how to make these two fantastic loved up flamingos. Hello, I'm Jill. This is the Fired Glass Studio and we have this beautiful tropical flamingo piece. Um, I've been having a little um, sketch in my sketchbook as you can see. Um, I'm feeling a bit tropical and um, I quite like the idea of the shape, um, the heart shape that you get with these two flamingos facing each other. And with uh, Valentine's Day just around the corner, I thought this would be a nice piece to do. Um, but you know, you don't need to get too soppy, you can actually use it for any time of the year. So, I have a beautifully deep um, curve mould, it's uh, one of Paul Gardner's moulds again, so uh, Slumping Mould is the place to get these from. Uh, it's been uh, washed with boron nitride, so it's, it's ready to go, um, and this is the piece I'm using. It's 26 centimetres long, but the piece of glass um, that I'm using has got a curve on the top, so it's this piece of glass, which is about 24 centimetres. And um, over the arc here, 27 centimetres, which fits nicely over that. So um, we're all ready to go with the mould, so I'm going to put that to one side for a second. Just pop that down here, and let's have a look at what we've got. So as I mentioned, um, I've been sketching because, you know, it's something to do. Um, you don't have to do that if it's in your head. You can just draw it straight onto your uh, piece of glass. But the glass that uh, I'm using is a three millimetre thick tector. And because it's transparent, of course, you can just pop that over your design if you decide that you're going to draw it first. And you can use a Sharpie and trace that design off if you want. You don't need too many lines um, and you don't need to slavishly copy what you've um, designed. So if you get a bit of uh, inspiration halfway through it, then absolutely fine. So we're good to go with our uh, design. It's already on the glass. I'm going to get rid of my sketchbook. I'm just going to pop it over in front of me so that at least I can see sort of what I... Uh, kind of envisage for the design as we go through and I've got a couple of kiln well I've got four kiln supports here there we go I generally do this so that if any of the pieces fall off onto the piece of paper I can recover it and perhaps put it back into my pot so where to start there's two bits to this really um, there's the flamingos and then there's this sort of uh, tropical island um, over on the right hand side so I want to work left to right so that I'm not working over the flamingos when I'm doing the uh, palm trees and I'm not disturbing them. So we're going to start with the flamingos and concentrate on doing that first. Now um, the flamingos are pink so I'm going to use a light pink striker for this. Now I don't know if you've um, worked with strikers before but striker basically means that it will strike to its full colour when you fire it. So there are some of the um, powders in here as you can see it just looks white at the moment but that's going to come out a beautiful um, sort of dual pink colour. Some of the strikers go uh, deeper the higher temperature you fire them at. We're going to tack fuse this so we're probably going to go to about 760 at the highest temperature and um, that's going to be fine. So we've done um, loads of these before. They're, they're actually quite popular um, and it gives you a beautifully uh, pink colour as I said. So I'm going to lay a base of that to begin with um, on my flamingo shape and then we can add some texture to it. When you're working with powders good idea to wear a mask. Um, ideally you're going to wear a N95 mask because that will give you the best protection. Um, they're a bit muffled when we're doing the videos so I'm gonna wear one of these masks. 
least that's going to give me um, protection from the powder because it's not good stuff. So I'm going to put that on in a second. But before I do that, I just want to talk about the tool that we're going to use for um, applying the powder onto here is something called a powder pro. So this is a powder pro. Now um, we have created a separate video so if you have a look at the link up here um, it talks to you about the powder pro and the pros and cons of using that and using a fritz shovel. So the powder pro itself, oh just pop that down there it's a bit weird because these things are magnetic and so they, they click together all over the place. Um, the Powder Pro itself has uh, little cartridges that come with it, so these come apart, and these cartridges fill with powder uh, so that you can then apply it to your piece. So I'm going to put my mask on, and I'm going to fill this with the pink striker that we talked about. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I need to get this under my glasses, otherwise they steam up. I'm sure you've all had the same problem. Right, light pink striker then. So that's the um, colour that I'm going to start to use. Um, these uh, cartridges, by the way, have different size holes in. Um, there's a, a set of cartridges that come with the Powder Pro. So this is a small hole. I actually want the bigger one, so I'm going to swap over. Pop that there. Uh, I don't know if you can see the difference there. But you can see there's a small hole and there's a large hole in that. So I'm going to use the one with the large hole. And I'm going to put my finger over the hole, pop it into the powder, just dig it in there, and you'll find that's filled with powder. So I'm tapping it on the sides so that the powder is actually tapped down into this cylinder. I'm going to put the top on over it, put my finger over the hole, otherwise the whole lot spurts out. And just give it a tap. There we go. And that's now charged with powder. So I'm going to pop that over there. Um, I said this was magnetic, so it just clicks on here. Make sure that you've got the hole facing downwards. And what I'm now going to do is, um, as I press this button, this is battery operated, and it's going to agitate this, it's going to uh, put a little bit of vibration along here, and the powder's going to come out. So, here we go. Need a steady hand if you support it with one hand. So I'm supporting this with my left hand. All I really want to do with this is just give myself the outline here. You don't necessarily have to fill in that whole big space. It's the neck that's the key thing because it's the thinnest part. It's really difficult to perhaps put this on with a sieve or put this on with a, a fritz shovel. So the neck is really the bit that I'm concerned with here and the little head bit. It's like holding an angry wasp. <laughs> there we go. So we've got the outline. You could fill all of that in, but um, it, it does take quite a lot to fill all that in. So I'm just going to use a, a fritz shovel or a, a little sieve to fill that in. So I'll do the other one. takes a bit of getting used to but once you've got your hand steady you're okay I've obviously decided that this is the lady flamingo because she's got a much more slender neck <laughs> there we go nearly done And this is, um, this is obviously ideal for things like the beak because the beak has got quite a fine little point to it and we want to do that in black. So we're going to get some black powder and put that on. There we go. 
So I wouldn't worry too much um, about all of these ridges because these flamingos are going to be dual encrusted flamingos. They're going to be a bit blingy. Um, so it doesn't matter too much. We'll, we'll obviously um, get some texture anyway when we put uh, beads on there. Okay. Right. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to empty this before I forget because um, you can't really tell what colour you've got in here. So if you don't empty it, you end up wondering what the colour is, especially when it's a striker colour. I'm going to get a small sieve. Oh, I don't need the lid on that, do I? I've got my little um, sieve here. So I'm going to just fill that halfway with powder. This, um, if you've seen any of the other videos where I've used this, it's quite simple. Just move this, you can hear that, and it creates a vibration and um, allows the powder to come out. So when you've got an area like this, it's quite a good tool to use so that you can be targeted in a specific area. There we go. Let's do the other one. We have some strange tools in glass fusing, don't we? <laughs> Anybody was watching me, they think, what on earth is she doing? Oh, I think he's just missing a tiny bit. There we go. Marvellous. So that's my flamingo body covered. Now if you're a bit um, worried about the shape at the bottom, these things, colour shapers, are perfect um, to use. You can get them at any art shop and you can just push that in and tidy any bits up. I'm not that precious about this because we've got some um, little shards of glass that we're going to put on here. But I'll just tidy that around there, make sure we've got some space to put all our other bits of glass. Right. So I'm going to use the um, fine tube and I'm going to put his um, beak and her beak on. So again, um, we're using a powder, but we're using black powder. All of this is going to be in our description below. So I just tap that down, put the lid on, make sure my finger's over the hole so it doesn't all come out. So we'll put all the codes, we'll put all the glass that we've used um, in there, in the description, and you can um, use this if you want, or you can choose your own colours. Right, so here we go. Ver supporting it with this finger... There we go. So it's not a lot, certainly not a lot of glass, but I do want to tidy that up a bit because I want that to be a nice sharp. There we go. Nice sharp beak. So that's in the middle, the straight edge one, the chisel edge one. Just push that and any of these stray little bits you can tidy up really easily. So if you don't have a Powder Pro, but you do have a stead steady hand with your Fritz shovel, you can actually do this with a Fritz shovel. So um, having done that before, it does work. I can tell you that it does work. But with your Fritz shovel, so this little um, job here, when you do it with a Fritz shovel, that is about as much powder as you want on there and you can just target it just tap in place and of course you've got little overspill there like this so just tap it in place tidy it up and that's it so we've got pink flamingos i know they don't look pink at the moment but they're pink flamingos with black beaks we need um a couple of beads which we'll find in a minute because we're going to put more beads along the bottom as well. Um, 
but at the moment they're floating so they need some legs so let's get rid of the black and we'll just add the legs on with the legs we're using a violet colour you can actually see the colour of this because we've got a little um, sample on the top of the bottle this is um, one of my students when they came here um, she wanted to make flamingos but um, she calls them flingos and she calls this flingo leg colour <laughs> so violet is flingo leg colour so we're going to just put the legs on they have a little knuckle so a little oval there and of course their legs generally are bent like this it's a typical flamingo pose so I'm going to go back over that because I want to make sure that I've got enough glass to actually show really well on there up and down give yourself a nice thick flamingo leg got a bubble for the knuckle there and then that down there we go now you can see because this is um, a smaller hole it takes a lot longer for this to come out so you could use the other one I'm just going to tap that as well because sometimes um, what happens is that the powder and the static that builds up pulls the powder up to the top so here we go you need to be quite patient with this as you can see I'm going reasonably slowly the faster you go the finer the line it's a bit like using an airbrush if you've ever used an airbrush very similar So you can see if I go quicker I get a much finer line so obviously as you slow down nice thick line give her some feet she's got dainty little feet because she's a girly there we go last one I'm glad it's the last one because I'm beginning to fog up on my glasses with the, with the mask. Nearly there. <laughs> there we go. Last bit of her foot. Okay, happy with that. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to leave this here because I'm going to come back to that for the background um, for some of the bits in between. Um, I haven't put the background on first because it's not like previous backgrounds that we've done. We're actually going to pick up the waves um, by using this and just put lines to um, give us the effect of ripples really um in the sea so that's fine so I put that to one side um, i'm happy with the background of my flamingos themselves i now want to add some um some of the jeweled bits we talked about so there's a couple of bits that um, i've already prepared here let's get these ready take my mask off now got that over there right so um, I often have little pots full of um, bits of chippings bits and pieces you can probably see from my shelves up here um, there's all sorts of bottles with different colours in um, and this is my um, either pink flowers or flamingo feathers it's whatever you want it to be but it's all pink essentially so in here I've got some chippings 
like this. Now, um, I do normally say that we will put the colours in the um, description. To be fair, this is whatever you've got that looks like it might fit the bill for flamingos. So I've got some reds. Um, this here is pink striker. Um, so it's going to be the same colour as the, the background that we've got there. I've got some... Um, I think I've got some violets in here as well. So that's fine. But these have been um, chopped off by using mosaic nippers. So all we've done is taken a piece of glass. So I like this piece here, for instance. Ooh. There we go. So like this piece, um, we would use mosaic nippers just to nip the edge of this and chop um, onto here. I'm going to show you how I do that for these big petals um, in a little while. But we've done the same thing for these tiny little shards. If you've made wreaths before, ooh, then you're familiar with that. So, when you look at Flamingo, if you look back at the drawing that we did, so um, it's just coming up right now, um, you can see that at the base underneath where the shadow is hitting it, um, you've got some beautiful dark red colours. So I'm going to take these along with some of the pinks. Don't forget this is not blue or purple. It looks like it at the moment, but that's pink striker. This is red with an iridescent coating. I'll give you a close um, version of this, but it's, um, it's something I picked up in a glass store. It's all COE90. The stuff we're using is COE90. You don't have to be too regimented with this. Just have fun with it. Um, so these are representing all of these um, feathers that stick out on the bottom of the flamingo. So I'm going to take some more of this. Some of it's red, some of it's pink. Altogether it's going to look pretty cool when we finish. So I think we'll have a few more just here. Decide where they're going to go, wherever you feel they look best. If it's not right, just turn it over. I think this is fuchsia, which is a beautiful colour. So we'll give her some lovely little fuchsia pieces in her tail feathers. This is a lovely thing to do. It's, it's nice for Valentine's Day, as I said, but it's a beautiful summery piece. I want that the other way up, I think. Oh no, I don't, because that's iridescent. You know, I don't know if you can pick that up on the camera, but it's got a little iridescence on the top of it, which would be really nice. So yeah, it's a lovely summery piece to do. We do them as single flamingos as well, so a bigger version of it on an arch, which looks good. But I quite like this with its little palm trees on there. So we'll add these in. Even the tiny bits in here will just look like little beads. It's very, very blingy, which is nice. The other thing that um, I like to use on here is, um, let's see if I can show you some of this. There we go. This is um, cranberry pink, and it's this stuff. It's uh, cranberry pink confetti glass. So confetti glass looks like this. It's a byproduct of when they roll the, the big sheets. And you can see you get some um, lovely light through that. And these look nice on here as well. So for another little bit of texture, Ooh. <laughs> that's the thing with this stuff, it can go all over the place, difficult to pick up sometimes. So if you do that, that's not a problem, just get your colour shaper back, and there we go, that's it, broken leg fixed. Alright, I think I'm okay with the cranberry. There's a couple more bits um, I'm going to add into here of lighter colour, um, which are marzipan and pink. So, um, a couple of marzipan bits in here. This one. There we go. And a few more light. Um, this is uh, petal pink. Alright. I 
happy with the tail feathers. So um, this is my um, little pink flower mix pot. All my little bits of pink go in there. So put that all away. Happy with that. And uh, it's time to have some beads. So I'm going to do a mixture of beads and marini. Uh, let's get the beads. It's my bead box, my famous bead box. I've got all sorts of uh, colours in here. This, this is actually a nice mix over on this side. So this is where we full fused perhaps little bits that have come off broken tea lights. And what you've got in there is um, some nice sort of greenish uh, fuchsia pink colours. I quite like those, they're nice. And we're just going to add those here. We've got a few purples in them. Perhaps not going to go too crazy with this. Oh, I like that purple. Look at that. That's lovely. He looks like he'd have a big, big purple one there. Um, get some more dainty ones. Pop them in for Mrs. Flamingo. These are quite nice. I quite like the um, pinks, the subtlety of the pinks that are in here. Pop those in. Quite like those. So while I'm here um, in the bead box, I'm going to find some eyes for my flamingos. So these um, they're best done with the opals. Um, you've got a couple of options really. Um, I've got some black that I fused. I've also got some aventurine blue, um, which look really nice and give a, a little bit of sparkle. Sometimes they get mixed up, but um, we'll have a look see if we can find one. Um, I think these look quite nice. There we go. Yeah, we like that. So it's a good size as well. That looks okay. She's got some nice blue eyes. There we are. So they can see, our flamingos can see now. And it's got some uh, good aventurine blue eyes. Let's put these away before I knock them over. Rid of those. So that's a good use for sort of multicoloured beads. I've also got some um, marina here that we've pulled. This is quite a popular one and so it's um, it's quite low at the moment. I think I need to make some more. This is called Pink Mix um, and it's got a few abstract sort of designs in it but it looks beautiful. There's um, some fuchsia in there. So I think they're quite dainty and they look well on a flamingo. So that can go on there. A few stars in the middle of it, which is nice. I think she would have some stars. Oh, that's dropped on its side. There we go. So we like those. Mm -mm root around, find something that we like. Oh look, there's a big star there, so I'll stick that on there. Fantastic. Um, I'll pop that one. Pop that back on there. Oh, my little samples. Forgot to put them in the box. I'll be looking for those. So they're looking quite cool. Um, I think that um, I probably want, what shall I put on there? I think actually I might go back to my beads and put some clear going up the neck of the um, flamingos. So let's get that back in for a second. So I quite like that idea. Let's root around in here. I don't want them to be too big. Oh, look, that one looks like it might be all right. And what that's going to do is just give us some extra texture. It's going to just make that a little bit... Um, it'll displace the powder so because they're clear. And it'll give us a bit of extra texture as well on there. And then some of these are quite tiny. If I could stop them from rolling everywhere. There we go. I fire my beads... Um, at quite a high temperature so they do get quite round. They, they will have a flat bottom um, but if you want to know how to 
do this and create yourself a, a little bead box um, full of beads have a look at this video this one is um, all about making dots as most glass fusers call them glass beads so I think this will look pretty cool pop that in there do the same for her She's got some smaller beads on there. These are getting a bit big now, so I'm going to root around for some smaller ones. There we go. I'm surprised you can't hear the wind outside today, so this is it's quite nice being on a tropical island with some flamingos when it's so cold outside. <laughs> there we are. Last one. So we'll pop that on there. Now you could be really cheesy if you want to and you could get some heart marini. We do have some heart marini around somewhere um, and you could add those on there if you are specifically wanting this for a Valentine's Day gift but I'm going to leave it there. I think I'm quite happy with my flamingos as they are. They've got enough bling on them. So that's the flamingos done. Um, the next bit to tackle is this bit over here and we left it like that if you remember so we're not working over the top of the flamingos so that we don't disturb them. So my next piece I'm going to put my bead box away and get ready to do the little tropical island.